Welcome to our first episode of House Hunters Eat by La Travel. Today we're house hunting in the area of Colonia del Valle, which is south of Mexico City, like the southern part of Mexico City. Uh, we're just excited. This is our first showing. Too bad, too bad. And quite expensive, I think. It was, this one's listed for 22,000 Mexican pesos, which at today's exchange rate of like 16 and a half to 17 pesos to the dollar is at around like $1,300 per month. Which doesn't include water, gas, and all that, so. And it's not furnished, so. Yeah, this is definitely, I think, uh, higher than what I was expecting to pay, but I like the area and I just want to, we just want to give it a shot, start yeah. looking. So right off the bat, we love how much natural light is coming in. It's always nice to have balconies for some private outdoor space. Here's a look into the first bathroom. Looks decent enough. And here's a better look into the kitchen. Not too big, not too small. Comes with a stove. No refrigerator as it's not furnished. This would be the boiler room, AKA where you would put your washer and dryer. The bathroom in the main bedroom, which also has a walk-in closet. Let's check that out. And it's super big, very nice. And there is a second bedroom. Like we mentioned, it's a two bed, two bath. And we like to look at the two bed, two baths because we hope to have family visit, we hope to have friends visit. It's also nice um, to have maybe a home office. We're still trying to figure out exactly, but we like a little bit of extra space. For an additional 2,000 pesos, you can also have access to a private rooftop area, which is nice if you wanna have parties and things like that. I'm always thinking about parties. <laughs> We just finished viewing and uh, wow, they are showing people back to back to back. There's lots of interest in this apartment and he was telling us that the market is hot for rentals, that there aren't many apartments for sale. Um, they're renting fast. Apartments aren't selling much lately, so renting is an easier option. And this guy like showed us, but he was kind of, I felt kind of rushed, rushed, but it makes sense because he had a list of people showing. Like, back to back. I'm still unsure about the price. The price and then the accessibility to public transportation for yeah. us to travel to the university because that's going to be key for like an everyday community. He said the nearest metro stop is a 10 minute walk from here. But all in all, it just made me a little nervous to hear yeah. him say how competitive the renting market is and how fast places are going. So this one may or may not be the one, but we're gonna keep looking. Our apartment hunting strategy started with the good old trusty walking around the neighborhood looking for for rent signs. The good thing about that is that those apartments tend to be less competitive, but the downside is that you have no idea what they look like on the inside and you're just going based on the street and the outside of the building. We also searched on Facebook Marketplace, but those listings were super competitive as in people jumped on them very quickly and they tended to be much more expensive. But the platform that we found to be most helpful as far as internet platforms go was Mercado Libre. Towards the end of this video, we're gonna show you exactly what we were asked for in order to qualify to rent an apartment. So while we wait for other contacts to respond to our messages, we're gonna walk around and get to know some other neighborhoods. We're about to enter the neighborhood called Choco. This is the first time that I'm actually looking for an apartment in my life. Kind of weird to say that. Like, we've gone house shopping, uh, condo shopping, but more so for an, like an investment, not necessarily for me to stay. Uh, my parents spoiled me a little bit too much because <laughs> I lived at home during college and then uh, lived, what, two houses down from my parents after college, so this is a little stressful for me right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm starting to feel it too, but the good thing is it's, it's early August. We're looking for something starting in September because we've currently booked uh, an Airbnb for the whole month of August, so we're okay. So our strategy right now is to kind of like just go to the neighborhoods, check out to see if they're walkable, if we would like to live in them, if we see, see ourselves area. living in them. So right off the bat, we're passing up the mall. This is Patio Universidad. They got the movies, you got an IHOP, Walmart, a bunch of restaurants. It's always, I think, nice to have a mall nearby, so if you need something, you don't have to drive to it. In my preference, I'm not necessarily looking for a high-rise. I don't know why, I've just never lived in a high-rise and I don't feel comfortable, especially knowing that there's earthquakes here, although they do say that the southern part of Mexico City Feels them less or like no they're more equipped uh, since it's newer 
they've uh, built these buildings with the consideration of like earthquakes and things like that so this one looks really nice but like I said you know I forget things what if like I forget the eggs at the car or I forget the eggs they gotta, <laughs> gotta get go six all teams. the way back down <laughs> So preferably for me, I'm looking for a place that's no more than like five, six stories high. Um, yeah. And what we're doing right now is one, getting to know the neighborhood and two, looking out for, for rent posters. I see one right there, but it says rentado. This is just one street right now, but I'm not feeling too great about this neighborhood. I mean, it's quiet, but it feels very industrial. I'm not digging it. What's the name of the other neighborhood we really liked yes. yesterday? we walked around a neighborhood called Chimalistak, which is beautiful, lots of mansions. Yeah, way out <laughs> of our budget. Way out of our budget, but and it looked a little more so like houses, like big houses, so probably more than we need. And then the other neighborhood we really liked was Santa Catarina. Oh, Santa Catarina is but beautiful. But there were like almost no rents available. A little frustrating, we keep seeing more for sale signs than we do for rent signs. Ideally, to start here in Mexico City, what I would really like is an apartment like the one we had in Jalapa, which is right across the street. Sorry, That's okay. the music construction. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so an apartment with two rooms, a kitchen, right across the street from the university, a beautiful park, and like a couple blocks away from all the nightlife, that would be really great, but it seems a little bit more complicated here in Mexico City. I like this neighborhood. It's quiet. There's not a lot of business, but it's quiet, calm, nice park. Yeah. We accidentally wandered into Colonia Acacias after looking through Shopo. We didn't find much, but Facebook Marketplace shows that there are apartments for rent here. So we just came to look around. We found a few signs. We're taking down numbers. Guys, this is exhausting. This is more mentally exhausting. Like my feet don't mind. I don't. I love walking. But like emo mentally and emotionally, I'm like, <laughs> especially when we see a poster from like half a block away and we get excited, we get close and then we see it says for sale, not for rent. Oh, stop playing with my emotions. Uh, look everywhere. We're still going to head our way to Florida. Oh yeah, and, the uh, next colonia over is Florida. Inn to check Florida and Guadalupe Inn are next. So stick around. This park is nice though. Mm. Ooh, wow, see, like this building. I would love to live in a building like this. These balconies are beautiful. Oh, I see another one. And it says, renta, yes. Though walking around and looking for for rent signs was exhausting, but we were able to collect a lot of phone numbers for local realtors that we otherwise had no idea how to find. Day two, we're gonna go check out another apartment here. I believe it's in the similar neighborhood that we tried yesterday, but just south of it. So here are our thoughts on this one. We like that it's super spacious. It's 121 meters squared with a three bedroom, two bathroom. Um, one of the bathrooms is in one of the bedrooms. It's a little bit funny looking. It's really small, but we're small people. <laughs> but so it, it works. Kinda, it kinda works. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it also gets lots of natural lights. The, they have huge windows that have views of trees in them so that's really nice it's on a big main street which is a plus and a an a, a, a kind of time. like the big windows because the big windows allow for a lot of noise to come in um, so it's nice to get around University Avenue is also intersected right on the corner so that would mean easy access for me to get to work it's close to so many different things like two we're in between two big malls one really fancy mall, one regular mall, I guess you could say. And there seems to be a lot of business around here, so it's, it's a good spot. I it's think it's even a good price, too. I think the location is probably my favorite thing about this place. It's Del Colonia del Valle Sur. So that's a really popular area for people because of all the commercial activity going on. It's very walkable, very green. And public transportation. I think my biggest con or just concern would be the fact that it's a really old building and that could mean you know structural issues for plumbing and things like that um but we'll see we, we got another place to see so we can compare yep. and contrast let's go so we're walking to our next showing which is the guadalupe inn neighborhood and from del valle sur that is a 30 minute walk and while we're walking I figured i would show you this beautiful building we just passed up um, this neighborhood is called oshotla 
And we we're noticing that just like Chicago, the city neighborhoods change from block to block. Like, yeah. very different environment, social status. Um, we we're noticing which, which neighborhoods have street food and which ones don't. Maybe that's a rule, because it's a rule in Chicago where you can have street food and where you can't. Really interesting. But uh, the neighborhood that we're in, we don't really see any street food vendors. Not uh, right now, yeah. It seems to be like the sidewalks are different. And now we cross over to this neighborhood like two blocks off. And it looks very different. Neighborhoods. Older less, houses, well, older buildings again. Older houses, yeah. older buildings, more street food. Like there's a bunch of street food vendors. So it kind of depends. So, so kind of like a balance, right? You want to live right in between both. So both. you want to have a little bit of both. Uh -huh. And we mentioned earlier that we think it's pretty cool that these apartments that we're looking at are close to malls. And I figured we should probably explain that. It's not because we like shopping. We're not really shoppers. The reason we like that is because inside the malls, there are Walmarts, there are Sorianas, there are the big grocery stores, there are coffee shops. Um, and we don't so have they're, a they're, car, so yeah. in case we need to buy something. So you know? the malls here have a lot of essentials and that's really the, the big draw for us. Even just here, look, look at the concrete floor. We're getting, we're getting closer to Florida, Florida, and look how the concrete's changing. Huge difference, and it's only gonna change more. Watch. Really pretty intersection. We're so It's so, so green, I love it. We are officially crossing into this Colonia neighborhood called Florida, or Florida. And look at the huge change. Look at the scenery. It's so much more green than the last neighborhood we were just in. The bushes are very clean, pretty and manicured. Everything here is much more aesthetically pleasing. We're starting to see more houses, not just apartments. And oh my gosh, they are beautiful. Walkable neighborhoods are really important to us because we spend a lot of time in front of screens, working, editing videos and all that. So being able to just walk, step right outside where we live to go for a, a walk and not have to go too far either, that's super important. Wow. Now ideally, this would be like a kind of place we'd like to stay at. Yeah. Modern, beautiful. Not too tall. So we're crossing into Avenida Insurgentes, which is a huge main artery for the for the city of Mexico City. And crossing the street is going to take us into the neighborhood of Guadalupe Inn. And already observation is that there's a building over in the corner that looks very colonial. So I have a feeling that this neighborhood is going to look very different. Not gonna lie, this is a beautiful bus stop. It matters, it matters because, you know, cleanliness, safetyness, and looks like you can walk it all the time of the day. I really would love that. Oh, look, a Pilates place. Ooh, th this is key. There's a bike lane. Yes. Definitely plan on getting bikes because I don't think I want a car. It's too much traffic and too expensive. Querétaro, we bought bikes and we got around Querétaro really everywhere. Pretty well, yeah. Up next is a fancy high-rise, which Kevin is afraid of, but let's see if he likes it. Brand new high-rise, I think, but uh, it looks like the elevator's not done yet. <laughs> uh, Please don't here. get stuck. Please don't get stuck. Is this creepy? Oh. Okay. The apartment was on the 10th floor and the views were absolutely stunning. The layout is small, 68 meters squared, small kitchen, and a very small living area. The dining table and couch would have to be very small. Every room in the house has tons of natural light and balcony space, which is lovely. Beautiful built-in furniture in this bedroom. The apartment has two full bathrooms with the main bedroom having its own private bathroom with the closet space built directly into the bathroom, which I thought was really cool. We start in this now let's go check out the amenities. All the amenities are on a main floor and it looks like they're shared by the two towers. Wow. <laughs> Here's the jacuzzi. Ooh, nice. This is the gym. It still doesn't have the equipment. This place is so new. They're still putting the finishing touches on it. It's really impressive. Cool. Love it. Oof. Falling in love with these luxuries. <laughs> so there are bathrooms here. Each one has a sauna and a massage table. 
This entire floor is dedicated to amenities for families. This looks like a little kid's play area. I don't think it's a daycare, but it could be staff. It could be staffed. What's over here? Acá que será? Centro de conferencias? Sí. Maybe like a business center? Business center. Oh, yeah. Con su barrita por si quieres. Oh, wow. This door was locked, but you can see there's a nice Weber grill there for shared use. Wow, oh, wow, this is an entire event space for parties. Looks like someone already had a party in here. I'm looking for places to live and I see places I can host parties. I get really excited. Oh, wow. I don't know about you, but I fell in love with this place. I know that you weren't really looking forward to living in a high rise, but this one has anti seismic as in anti earthquake structures. It looks safe. What do you think? I have to bite my, my lip and tongue on this one because I feel, you know, like it, 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 this one broke me. I love it. What I like is that there's so many anemones to it. I feel that having everything in one building would really a, it, give you more life because you can get so many things out of the way in one sitting. Plus, it's right on the main street for the university where you can get a bus Huge that takes you plus. directly. Straight shot to work for. Ah. And lastly, it's definitely more expensive than some of the other ones we're looking at. This one is 25,000 pesos per month, which at the current exchange rate, I think is about $1,500 or so. And while it is more money, we thought, well, maybe we can Airbnb the other bedroom um, on weekends or whenever we're not going to be home or whatever, right? But uh, it to help offset the weekend. cost. Yeah, but it doesn't seem like that's allowed in this building. So we can't really justify paying that much if we're not gonna be able to offset the cost somehow. While we wanna live comfortably, we want to be careful with our budget and spending because we're still saving to build our own home and apartments in Puerto Escondido. This neighborhood is called El Caracol and it's very close to Ciudad Universitaria where the university is. So we like the location. We don't really know anything about the neighborhood yet. This apartment complex also has a gym and an event space, but the coolest part is this. Wow, rooftop garden with a gorgeous view. No additional cost for this beautiful rooftop garden with four hot tub jacuzzis and lots of patio seating. Everywhere you look, it's gorgeous views of University City, Southern Coyoacan, and the mountains around it. And as if all that weren't enough, the apartment we're about to see comes with this private rooftop space. This two bed, two bath apartment is super nice with modern touches, making it one of the best priced we've seen at 15,500 pesos, a much more affordable option than the rest that we've seen. The downside is that it is way more south than what we're hoping for. So it'd be difficult for us to enjoy all the fun stuff in Mexico City without a car. The realtor offered to show us another apartment a block away in a luxury high-rise apartment. And we almost said no thank you until she mentioned that it was fully furnished. We started by touring the amenities, which were jaw-dropping amazing, including this two-floor gym with a yoga studio and a boxing area up on the top. I thought this adult playroom was gonna be my favorite room in all of the amenities. That was at least until I saw everything else. The garden area was huge. The pool was ginormous. It included jacuzzis, of course, event spaces, teen rooms and TV rooms, business centers and co-working rooms, outdoor grilling areas, and is that a tennis court? Pickleball court? I don't know anymore, but wow, this is really cool. And y'all, it even had a movie theater, but it was locked, so we couldn't look inside. Okay, here's the apartment. It's on the 27th floor, comes with a dining table, couch, coffee table, amazing views, TV, desk, kitchen appliances like the refrigerator, stove, microwave, washer and dryer, which is huge because apartments rarely come with those. We've got a bed. This is one of the bedrooms. Oh, wow, that view is amazing. Love that bed, it looks super comfy. We've got a pantry. Nice bathroom, bathroom number one. This is the main bedroom, which has its own private bathroom. Nice furniture, another TV. Okay, this place comes with two TVs. And here's the main room's bathroom. This is gonna be a really tough decision for sure because it's, it's such a convenient apartment. The, the prices 
uh, good for what everything that it comes with so we, we'd be willing to spend a little more for everything that it has but the butt is the biggest that butt. the neighborhood's not our favorite we, we fell in love with other neighborhoods um like colonia del valle del valle sur guadalupe in those that are closer to Coyoacán. We love Coyoacán, so we'd love to be within walking distance, if not in Coyoacán. So to be all the way over here, <laughs> um... We're on our way to see three different apartments today in three different neighborhoods. We're excited about all three of them because they're all in ideal locations. I have a feeling one of these might be it. Pros on this one, it's a two bed, two bath, very spacious living room. Oh, yeah. It has balconies going through the living room into the main bedroom. It has a rooftop with patio seating, which is nice. Um, and of course the location is a huge pro because it's in a neighborhood that we are really excited about. And it's two blocks from this beautiful park that we're walking around right now. This is called Colonia Acacias. It also is uh, a little bit cheaper than the one from yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that's a big plus. And you still get some of the same anemones. Uh, anemones. <laughs> Anemone. Anemone. <laughs> this one by the way was 16,000 pesos and the other one was 17,000 so the more expensive one did not have a balcony did not have an established rooftop with patio seating or anything like that yeah. but it did have a much more modern and beautiful kitchen we really like the layout also spacious um, so they're both both very similar one is cheaper than the other, than the other but it has the balcony and the rooftop and the kitchen and work so we're leaning towards going with the slightly older looking apartment which leads us into our cons now uh -huh. right like cons are that the kitchen is a little bit outdated the floors are definitely outdated yeah you, the floors kind of creak a little bit the windows squeak a little but it's nice enough like i don't need luxury i know we've looked at a few luxurious apartments and that's been fun but at the end of the day well, there are other goals to consider. Okay, are you ready to see which apartment we chose? We actually put in applications for the last two apartments you just saw, but other people beat us to the punch. Speaking of which, here's what we had to do to qualify as renters. We had to provide the completed application form, show proof of income three times the monthly rent, so we had to show bank statements and earning statements for the last three months. We also needed a background check. Or a poliza jurídica, which is like kind of like the contract that includes the background check. Different people don't sold us different things. For the, but for the apartment we ended up with, we thankfully just needed to do a background check. They waived the poliza jurídica for us. Um, and usually that responsibility falls on the renter. So you have to, you have to pay for that yourself. Ours was 2,000 pesos, but other people who were asking us for poliza jurídica range from six to 8,000 pesos. And lastly, almost everyone will ask you either for a fiador, aval, or something called an obligado solidario. That is like a co-signer or someone else who can back you up. Usually that person has to have property within Mexico City when you're renting in Mexico City, but we didn't have anyone that we could list. So we figured out a way to get them to allow me to be the obligado solidario. Kevin is listed as the renter and I'm listed as the person who will be responsible to pay for him, for his rent if he doesn't. Basically, I showed my earning statements, I showed the promise of a job that I haven't started yet, so that's why it was, that's why it was so complicated. But it worked out. And here's the apartment. This is a two bed, two bathroom, spacious apartment on the fourth floor of a six story building, just like Kevin wanted. Look at that beautiful kitchen and that beautiful stove. It's in Colonia Acacias, the neighborhood we were aiming for. This is the first bathroom. It's got a huge shower, straight into the main bedroom. Look at all that natural lights, beautiful closet space. We will be paying 19,500 pesos per month, which includes water and maintenance. What do you think? Don't forget to comment your thoughts below. And the bathroom in the main bedroom. Yes, another huge shower. Here's the second bedroom, AKA our guest bedroom, AKA office space or Kevin's room. Yeah, this could be Kevin's room. And our favorite part, a fun rooftop with a grill, patio seating, views, and a hot tub. And this is our new home.
It's completely empty. <laughs> but it's our new home. And we're really excited to be here. We're gonna be working on furnishing it next. So if you're interested in learning about what it costs to furnish an entire apartment, oh, such a leave that down in the comments below. We can maybe put that together in the next video. If you made it to the end of this one, drop your favorite emoji. I can't think of which one. Thanks so much for watching. Se cuidan, se bañan, y nos vemos en la próxima. Chao.